minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today I am joined by Phil from 3DP UK, a man who once uh, farted in a pool and then dived under the water to smell it. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm joined by Mike, or known by his wrestler name, Stone Cold Steve Autism. Now I was told <laughs> specifically in a production meeting you not to tell either of those jokes. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we are taking a look at the K1 Max. You will notice that this is already out of its box. We normally do um, uh, we normally do an unboxing video. We didn't do that because there were a few people who had reported that their K1s had turned up damaged. So we wanted to uh, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have that. And we also weren't really a hundred percent sure if they had sent us the Max or the regular one, and I needed to make the thumbnail. So. <laughs> So they have wasn't a hundred percent sure what was in the parcel. Mm. Was, I mean, yeah, we had a. It's been a busy week. There's been we've, we've had we've had some deliveries and we wasn't yeah. sure what was in what box. Yeah. <laughs> so we haven't printed with it yet. I've turned it on. I've done the onset calibration stuff, and that's it. I haven't printed with it yet. We've got two kilos of Creality's Hyper Series filament, um, and it also comes with the obligatory little toolbox. Everything in here just feels like it's a slightly higher level of quality than you would normally get. Mm -hmm. So, like, so these are the snippers. So, if I show you, like, they're bigger for a start. A fairly, right? a fairly standard pair, right? So, we've got a fairly standard pair of of snips there, but then we have these ones, which have got sort of a big beefy spring on them, and they're just like, and it's just. These are just these are just nicer, mm -hmm. and the same goes with a lot of what's in there. So they've given you a proper spanner rather than giving you the little pressed metal spanners that they normally uh, that they normally provide. Um, they've given you an actual nozzle removal tool rather than just another spanner. Um, they've given you a nice little uh, fairly sharp uh, spatula, and then you've actually got so this here. I don't know if you can see that. But this mm -hmm. is a um, it's a filament unplugging tool, basically. So you can actually push down and get a little bit of pressure if you've got a clog in your hot end and you're able to uh, you're able to unclog it. Um, and then we also get a unbranded uh, USB drive. I will more than likely end up using a Kingston one in this because these all of the unbranded USB drives I've ever had have failed relatively quickly. Um, or, but, never worked. or never worked in the first instance, yeah. So let's just take a quick look around the machine. So it's very nice. It has the it has a twist on spool holder in the back. Uh, nothing really to write home about there. The back of this is just like a like a weird plastic injection molded honeycomb thing. Everything on this has got real bamboo vibes. So, and it, it's very clearly designed with a competitor in mind. So we have almost identical drag chains. We have a filament sensor that's all the way up the back here. Um, the tool head even, if you get a look at the tool head there, it even looks quite a lot like a bamboo tool head even there. Um, they've done a nice job. You get a smooth, you get a two, well, it's just a one-sided one, sorry. But you get a, mm. uh, a smooth PEI sheet, I'm assuming. Um, the build volume on the Max. One second, and I will bring my, my spec sheet up. I'm pretty sure it's 300 by 300, but I feel like I've mm -hmm. made that up. So no, you're right. It's just... So right now... Oh, yeah, 300. So 300 cubed. 300 by 300 by 300. Um Right now, if you want to buy this in the UK, it is coming up. So we've got the we've actually got the essential combo where you get a couple of uh, hyperfilaments and you get uh, 
you get a little box with your with your spare nozzles in it as well. That comes in at nine hundred and fifty three dollars. Which, to be clear, if this can compete with a bamboo X one carbon without an AMS, a bamboo carbon is about twelve hundred pounds. Um, I'm not actually sure if you can buy an X one C without a AMS anymore. I think it's only the X1 combo you can buy now, and that's 1400 Obviously, this doesn't have an AMS. Um, yeah. Also doesn't have yeah. any of the yeah. gubbings yet. Yeah, It doesn't have any of the mm -hmm. gubbings at the back that would imply that an AMS would be easy to install if it did. But um, but in theory, there's no reason why they couldn't do it. Um, you know, if, they, if they've designed the printer, so if they, if they decided to design an AMS, it would be interesting to see what they did. So I'm going to dive straight in to some of Creality's hyperfilament. So in your um, spares box, did you get a glue stick like I didn't? No. That's the that's the weird thing is that their first thing they ask you to do with a build plate is to put glue on it. But you, if you as a first time user, it. they don't provide it. You'd be a little bit like, mm, okay. Yeah, that is weird. Um, I mean, I have to say, I find it a bit odd that they would want you to um, that they would want you to that you'd want you to glue the plate in the first place anyway. Because mm. frankly, I would not expect to like I don't like you don't have to glue the bamboo straight out of the gate for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just go into the plus. Slice. You've got them new super sparkly ones on the bamboo. Yeah. Yes, I have got the new super sparkly ones. And I'd imagine I could get one for this, to be honest. It's just a magnetic yeah. bed. You can. So let's just do a quick there. And then, interestingly, it says control, but there's no way to um, set the temperature. Oh, there we go, down here. So I am using, um, let's put this up on the screen rather than just... Uh, so, share screen, window, Creality Print. There we go. Does that come up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So this is Creality Print. Um, this is their. This is Creality Slicer. Um, I don't know what slicer this is based off of. I've had a play about with it already. So when you want to do your settings, you double click here. You can um, you can go through all of your settings in pretty good detail. Standard settings here are pretty much 300 millimeters a second with uh, travel speed set at 500. Initial layer is 60 millimeters a second. And then wall speeds and things like that. Like they're, they're, they're all pretty... That's pretty pretty common. That's pretty, you know, that's that's sort of what I would expect for a machine at this size. Um, all your print calling stuff is on there. Build plate adhesion. So this is going to apply a brim. So I am not going to put a brim on because I hate brims. I mean, everything's in here, but it, I mean, I don't know if anyone in the chat knows what slicer this is based off of. Because I don't. It doesn't look like a reskin of something that I've seen before, but um, but yeah. So what we will do is we will just go back to here. This is obviously the webcam in here. I'm going to set that to 200 so that we can load the filament in. Might be worth adding that any of the definitely use the hyper PLA for your test prints that are preloaded because try and print it with standard um, PLA and it will block the nozzle. It will just clog. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Where anything above 300 MMS PLA standard struggles um, and you'll start hearing a clicking. Um, I found it when I tried it the other day. So, okay, so that means that the speeds that they're claiming only works when are only for sort of quote unquote hyper PLA. 
not mm -hmm. um, not something that you could achieve with normal PLA, unless I assume you crank the temperature right up. Yeah, be interesting to see if we can actually. It'd be interesting to see if we can uh, if we can do that. Let's just get some of this filament fed in. He said. All right, go on then. <laughs> how do you how do you make it feed filament? I'm not seeing I'm not seeing an E. I'm not seeing an E on any of this. So I'm guessing you can't. Or you can't from the slicer anyway. Can you do it from the no. screen? Let's find out. Extrude and retract. Got a little latch on the extruder, just make sure it's in the open position. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Normally, right to the right is unlocked, yeah, yeah, to the left it. is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go, it's taking it straight in. Uh, yeah, Rick, um, we actually had similar. When we first had a look at this slicer, we were like, well, that camera's appalling. <laughs> it's really bad. Look at the quality of it. And then we realised there was something stuck over the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hadn't taken the protective cover off. Yeah, not my brightest moment, if I'm honest. Needed a yellow sticker. There we go. So I guess we'll just take that out. Oh, that's almost completely impossible to get out. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess we're moving that down then. Okay. Right, let's give it a go printing the benchy then, shall we? See how it does. So slice that. Land printing. Confirm. So does that mean that it's going to print or do we still have to start printing? Was I supposed to click print with calibration? Mm, have you not calibrated yet? If you like. I'll stop that. <laughs> yeah. Just get that little turdy bit off the bed. Oh, that's a super loud fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rick, if you contact Creality, they can actually re-register your um, K1, K1 Max, whichever you've got. If it's already been used, sometimes if you try to use the £3 gift, it can block it if you try once and it, it doesn't work out. I had the same thing with mine and they reset it. It'd be fine after 48 hours. <clears throat> Weird that yours had already been registered. Oh, to get the free gift. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The $3 gift pack. Fair enough. 
they said to me that um, it's probably because some of the um, serial numbers are very alike and somebody puts in the wrong number, one digit, they enter it in, doesn't work. It then registers your serial number out if you get you only get one chance. That's what Which, they told me. Anyway. All right, like I kind of get, but at the same time, their excuse is that someone ultimately guessed my serial number. <laughs> yeah, they're very alike, though. I what suppose is, what so what the they're gift? saying is they're using sequential serial numbers, not randomized ones. So yeah. it's literally machine one million and one, machine one million and two, machine yeah, one pretty million. Pretty much. Okay. It's interesting. It's not how it's not how the vast majority of companies do it for that exact reason. Because yeah. people will literally be able to access things that are supposed to be a one time use for your machine. But mm. fair enough. I mean it's a three dollar gift, so it's not exactly the end of the world. But what still, is the gift? Three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you save a hundred dollars and you get three dollars back. Um, it's a new extruder, um, filament, I believe. Um, so we've got the little hot end like, box, probably, which comes little, with a sock, a little camera. <laughs> so we've got a spare hot end assembly, in that we've got a so we've got the little uh. The little condom and then we've got the uh and then we've got the throat nozzle heat cartridge and thermistor assembly there so um so we've got we've got those as spares we don't have the extra nozzles um i thought i thought we did i thought they were in that hot end box but they're not um personally if this works the same way and as well over wi-fi as my bamboo does I'm pretty unlikely to want to use um, the USB stick. Um, so I will more than likely just print this over, over Wi-Fi. I do, have the, I do have the wonderful experience now of adding yet another slicer to my life. So, so let me just be clear, right? I have – so the machines that I've got, right, we've got the Nova Whale 3. That uses Nova Maker, Right. We've then got Bamboo Studio for Bamboo. We've got uh, Chi 2 Box for the P13. So to be fair, that, that that's fine. Uh, uh, then you've got Ultimate, sorry, you've got Uniformation Slicer for the GK2. You've now got Creality Slicer for the Creality. We've got a Quiddy Plus 3 in the shop at the moment. That comes with Quiddy Slicer if you want to access any of their stuff. So awesome Voron. source for that as well. Um, then I Voron. have to use, I use Super Slicer for the Voron and for the Rat Rig. Um, Quick change of subject. Anchor Make have released info on their V6 multi-filament setup. It's a totally new hot end with six nozzles. Okay. Um, so didn't wasn't there a Prusa mod that did something like that? That had like a bunch of nozzles on the side or something. The difficulty is, right, is that the only way that multi-material makes sense for me is if you can remove the purge block. If you can get rid of the purge block, then I can live with the fact that prints take longer. Um, I just don't want to... Hey, Akuma Mods. Um, so I, I can live with the fact that prints take longer. What I can't live with is that they take longer and like three times as much material. So like, I don't want to... Like, I like that's that just really... It's just super wasteful and it... Mm. And it takes super ages. I don't really, it's crap. The AMS on the bamboo is about the best. Um, uh, it's better to go on the YouTube channel. Oh, okay, right, fine. Um, so uh, it, the AMS on the bamboo labs, I would say, is, is about the best that I've, uh, that I've, that I've seen. Um, I've tried a Palette Pro. Uh, that did not work well. Um, I've tried IDEXs. You get two colors. Okay, not. Just having a look to see whether this is actually printing. Well, you was up to seven slicers and you forgot one. <laughs> I was up to seven slicers. Yeah, and you forgot one. I forgot one. Oh, hold on. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. Uh, 
So I did uniform mail, I did G2 box. Any cubic uses the G2 box. Mm. Nah. Yeah. Go on. Cool Seeger. Oh, yeah. And then Cool Seeger's got the right eight slice slices. As well. Yeah. Eight slices. For like I, nine use, I use G2 box. One. Okay. <laughs> Orca. So Rick, I, I, I was I was this close to using Orca, and then Bamboo kind of, um, for legal reasons I can't say stole, but absorbed all of the work that Orca Slicer had done and rolled it straight up into one of their updates. And after that, be honest and say that I've not really found much of a much of a. There's no incentive anymore for me to go over to Orca. Dual heads with an AMS. So while one is printing, the other is getting ready for the next color. Yeah. It's so nice, Stephen, nice so you're not wrong. Again, I think light. that's I think that would I think that would probably work because again, it's basically an MMU with an IDEX, effectively. Um, the issue that I have with it is still the waste because there still has to be some sort of purge. Even if you've got IDEXs, they normally have little purge mm. buckets at the side, like the J1 does or like the craft bot. Oh, this is moving the desk quite a lot. <laughs> Your beer affair. I'd just like to say I ordered some brushes off AliExpress, paint brushes. Because I don't want to use my good brushes that I use for certain things on everything I paint. This roll of brushes mm. was seven pounds delivered. That's good. <laughs> How can they make that for seven pounds delivered? No, I don't know. And it came from this country, you know. It's very loud. <laughs> that is a little bit loud, isn't it? It's just a touch. I don't know if I've still got my um, dust sound machine in here. Somewhere around, somewhat, somewhere around here, we've got the uh, we've got the the audio tester, which I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. So, okay. This K1 jumps so around more than his washing machine. See, look at all the fancy <laughs> tools that we have now. So outside is 66 decibels. Inside. Inside. Inside is 87. <laughs> so that's I can't, rem I can't remember what the... Uh... What the bamboo was, I don't remember either. So this has, um, so this has a very similar fan set up to the bamboo, where it's got the tall head fans that blow down and across, and then it's also got an it's got an auxiliary fan that's mounted on the uh, on the left hand panel that blows right across the bed. Um, I will say this: this is moving about my my desk a fair chunk, so um, I will have to. What's the bamboo? Um, can you, Mike, if you go I'm, to the, uh, looking if you the go video, to the video I think we did chapters. Yeah, I'm looking for it now. So you can, uh, you can look it up. I'm not, I mean, I want to be really clear. We come across as bamboo fanboys on the channel quite a lot. I really enjoy my bamboo. I am under no illusions that it is not a perfect machine at all, right? It's still a closed system. They haven't open sourced their boards. They haven't used parts that you can readily get from anyone other than them. And then they're incapable of, of keeping up with supply. Their support model is garbage. Like their, their ticketing system, really, really bad. Um, I know somebody who ordered a Bamboo X1. It never even turned up. And they're still dragging their heels on trying to get either them a replacement or a refund. Um, it isn't quiet. And the AMS motors are underpowered for the machine. Mm -hmm. It cannot, especially with aftermarket. Well, right, so the... Uh... The right anchor on. make is 74.4. Yeah. What was the bamboo? It's coming up next. Door closed, 74.7. 74.7. Door open, 81. So, door closed is... 63. Door open... 
85. So it's louder with the door open, but quieter with the door closed. Yeah. Mm. But we're talking within a few decibels, yeah, like yeah. within four or five decibels of each other. So it's not, it's not one savagely louder than the other. Mm. This reckons it is going to do this benchy in, let's just have a look. So it's a 36 minute benchy. No, sorry, it's a 41 minute benchy because it's done six minutes already and it's got 35 minutes left. So it is, this is on, and I want to be really clear, this is their slicer, their profile, their filament. Mm. There is, we haven't touched anything, uh, tried to patent the Voron build designs. Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. Oh, uh, again, I really like my Bamboo X1 Carbon. Um, I'm under no illusions that Bamboo is the new messiah. And I'm certainly under no illusions that the X1C is the, is the gift to 3D printing. What I will say is the X1 has been a market disruptor. Mm. Phil, have you got the P1P or have you got the X1? I can't remember. X1 Carbon. Yeah. You've got the X1. Yeah. So, yeah. again, lovely machine. I really like mm -hmm. it. But and it, and it changed the market. Right. In the sense mm. that suddenly Creality had to make this. Yeah. Whereas before they were busy making the end of five Mac Pro Turbo three Stripe edition or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Right. They were they mm. were just rehashing the same thing over and over again. They weren't doing yeah. anything new. They weren't bringing anything new to the table. They weren't changing anything in the market. They were just taking the same parts and reconfiguring them like Legos. And Bamboo came along and they set a different precedent. And it was the same with the upset for Prusa as well. Mm. Right? Prusa had this really reliable machine. They had, they had the quality. They had all this stuff that previously other companies just couldn't touch. And now this comes along or the Bamboo comes along and suddenly yeah. Prusa's sweating. Mm -hmm. Because what you've got here is a 300 by 300 by 300 sub 1000 pound core xy that will do four times the speed of a prusa in theory mm. will turn out the same quality has better what, features what you've got there what you've got there is a reason not to buy the prusa yeah mm -hmm. because even if you were looking even if you said oh, i don't i don't want to spend the thousand and you just went for the k1 the k1 is I think five five four nine. <coughs> mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Hold on, before I start. Yeah. Now five oh nine even. So right now yeah. the K one on its own five hundred and nine dollars. Mm -hmm. So why would you buy a Prusa? What 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 could Prusa be doing that at five hundred dollars the K one isn't? Or at nine hundred dollars, the K1 Max can't do better. Mm. ABS enclosed, faster camera, yeah. Wi-Fi printing, network printing. No build. You just get it out of the box and off it goes. Like this is this is absolutely mm. chewing through this print at the moment. I wouldn't suggest the K1. They base it to the K1 Max and crammed everything into a small space and it causes issues. Yeah, I mean, you could say that, but you could mm. also make almost the same case for something like the Voron 0, 0 0.1, where yeah. they took everything that made a Voron and they just made it really, really small. You could almost say that what they actually did is they started with a K1 and they scaled it up and made it better to make the Max. It's orange. <laughs> Yeah, it is, I guess. You can get them in different colours if you wanted. Mike, why don't you show people how... Have you got anything Ecto-1 in the uh, garage, or is it all in the house? Only the chassis. Oh, okay. Don't bother that. Then. So, the Ecto-1 has took a turn, hasn't it, the last few days? So, everything is on the Ecto-1 now. All the battery packs, all the lights everything the ecto-1 is done what it isn't is mounted to the chassis 
The reason for this is the X01 is so incredibly heavy that what it was doing was crushing the chassis and just breaking it. So what we then had to do was print out some blocks to go under the chassis like little jacks to hold the wheels just a tiny miller less than a millimeter off the floor so that all the weight is on them and not on the axles and the wheels because it's just so incredibly heavy i then discovered that if you was to do that there's no easy way to pick up the car because if you pick out from the sides all the exhausts and everything that run under it just crumple under your fingers mm. And it's so heavy, if you pick it up front to back, it feels like within a matter of time, that's going to snap clean enough because yeah. of its weight. So now we're having to print out an entire diorama that this car can be mounted on that you can just pick up the diorama. At this point, it's a two-man job to move this. <laughs> and yeah, the, I mean, it's a metre long. To print this over diorama, a metre long. It's 20 pieces. Yeah. So I had to knock up a base the other day in Fusion 360, which was uh, which was all kinds of fun. Uh, are you going to do the figures to go with the Ecto One? That's because, no, we are uh, not. A Kuma mod <laughs> because this is an English channel, and you're a foreigner. <laughs> I don't come around your channel and saying chassis. <laughs> I'm just going to Google that because that I'm ninety percent sure. Yeah. A sh the chassis refers specifically to the load bearing part of the car's frame. So that's a perfectly legitimate word to use for that. Yeah. I just Googled it. And it's even on Wikipedia. <laughs> so that's absolutely that's absolutely a legitimate word to use for that. That's, <laughs> you, can't, you can't argue with that. That's, that. that's legitimate use of that word. Yeah. Let's just have a look. Hold on. I'm just looking to see where that we are. That was me in using the language we invented. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, what I'll do is whilst we are on here, I suppose I can just go on Wikipedia. Always right. Exactly. Yeah. You know it. You Check know it. and mate, sir. There we go. So you can see it printing there. I don't know if I can make that camera. Let's pretend I can make that camera bigger, shall we? I can. Hooray! Did it get bigger? It did. Huzzah! But this um, this sort of diorama bit we're doing, so it's a metre long, isn't it? And how wide is it? Uh, Well, the base is over a metre long. Yeah, over a metre long. I can't remember how wide it is, but it's very wide. The problem was, was that what I wanted it to look like was a street. So I wanted it to look like, um, I wanted it to look like a bit of pavement. It needed to be in scale with the size of the car. Yeah, which had to be in, size, in scale with the size of the car. And then I wanted it to be like, um, like, a, bit of, like a bit of road. So but the car could only thought, be on the road. So then I had to make an extra bit of pavement. So, so we thought what we'll do is if we're doing all this, we might as well light some of the parts because the car's all lit. But we might as well light some of the parts on the base we thought we'll put a lamp post there we'll light up the lamp post we'll put a drain in the curb we'll light the drain we'll use uv bulbs on them and we'll use uv paint like slime everywhere I thought that'd be cool mm. um the lamp post in order to get the lamp post into scale with a car the lamp post <laughs> is a 40 hour print on resin yeah. actually it said 40 in the slicer um I think what we're going to have to do with the lamp is we're going to have to make the lamp. Oh, right. oh yeah. No, that's different. It's a 66-hour print. Oh, right. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, I've done six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And then after that, I've got to do two sort of bent-up trash cans. Um, yeah. They're going to be 35, 40 hours. Judging by the size of them. So I think what we're going to have to do for the lamp, we're going to have to put magnets in the bottom of it and we're going to have to make the lamp detachable. And the reason be being... Wired. Yeah, but you, we'll, have to make the, we'll have to make the wire. Bye, James. 
<laughs> May part of the show is gone. That was annoying. <laughs> oh, I did that. Hold on. Right, anyway. Um, so <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to make the wires, like we'll have to put the wires in like a, in like a clip or something like that so that we can, uh, so that they can be disconnected as well. Reason being is that, so the, we've, done, we've done this Ecto-1 in partnership with Photocentric. Photocentric have a new hobby grade resin coming out, um, which I'm 34% sure I was supposed to mention now. No, you're not. No? No, 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 you wasn't. Can so, you just rewind that bit? Forget about all the things I just said, the only reason why we need to do it is because, you know, stuff and reasons. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, Have a bit of what he's just done is said what we've been keeping secret now for maybe four months, and it's due to be released at the end of September. And four weeks before it's released, you've blabbed it. I see. That's going to get mentioned. Yes, it will be. Even Ned kept it secret for so long. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to come up. Yeah. That's going to be an email. Oh, Paul's going to say really hurtful stuff. <laughs> I'll have to oh, send them some more no. pictures of the car. I'll just send them some more pictures of the car. And every time they yeah, say something, right, they, they, the they won't know. Or they will. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just keep One sending the pictures until they just stop asking. <laughs> Hold on. If we go to their shop. I'm just going to their shop because I just want to see that it's not there or not. <laughs> I'm quietly hoping that it's maybe. He told me the release date of it. Oh, it's not on the shop, Michael. No, he told me the release date. It's the 22nd of September. But didn't they tag? I thought they tagged us in something the other day that we then put on TikTok. Didn't they do that? No, 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 no. That's not. That's not a thing. <laughs> that was frozen. No, it is. That was Isn't frozen. It? That was frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, Michael! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, well, this is. Uh... Well, that lamppost has just got shorter. <laughs> and the awkward thing is, you've said it on the stream where we've had the most people on for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is an ideal. I'll grant you. I will grant you that that is. Uh... Luckily, most of the people on here are probably FDM people. Yeah. 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 James isn't. No. Andy, and I'm not being funny. James can see photocentric from his house. So yeah, well, uh, he needs to. He needs to like calm down a bit and just. I mean, I'm not, if look, I'm just saying that I know a squealer when I see one. James is a squealer. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Right. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll so, put an NDA uh, on this. Will, chat. They probably won't watch the stream, and if they do, then uh... what probably hasn't helped is the fact we've talked about it for five minutes. If we'd have just moved yeah, on, no one yeah, would have even noticed going for a while. But anyway, look how <laughs> nice this K one is. Let's talk about creality <laughs> things. I'll find some lawyers for you. I don't think that would make any difference because a lawyer would literally go, well, that's an open and shut case. You were literally told not to do that and you just did it anyway. Yeah. Bother. Well, anyway, let's talk about how cool this K1 is. Look at it go. <laughs> we'll have to take it down afterwards. <laughs> let's have a look and see what we're looking at on time. 20 minutes gone, 22 minutes left. Interestingly, once it gets past the bow, it should go quite quickly. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not it sticks to its times. Yeah, it, it, it's normally pretty accurate. See, I have to say that when it comes to workflow, you under NDA. Oh, yeah, we signed like three of them. They were really big. And, and one of them, Paul was in the room and he specifically tapped different bits of it. So that was, uh, yeah. 
problems. Anyway, um, so <laughs> moving on. It's taken a while, isn't it? Well, so this is so I haven't. This isn't like a hyper fast profile or anything. This is just their their hyper speed f, uh, filament, and um, and then uh, and then it's the profile that they had on there. So if we go back into the slicer. Is there like a different? So let's just. The one on the USB that I received, I did a fourteen-minute benchy. So there's generic PLA and stuff like that. Mm. You've got high quality and normal quality. Okay, so they've not got any other parameters that are on there. But does that mean that you can go onto? Oh, so this is their cloud one, right? So this is Creality Cloud model library, which, uh, which are these mm -hmm. paid for models? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's disgusting. Oh, some of them aren't. There we go. Yeah, all right. We won't be using that then. I was kind of quietly hoping there might be um, like a profile manager or something, but I'll have a look on the uh, I'll have a look on the USB stick um, later yeah. on and see whether or not um, see whether or not it's see what profiles are on there. If there's any that I can import. Does a super fast benchy on normal speed? Isn't it meant to be doing the benchy in 17 minutes if it's the one on the internal memory? So this isn't the one on the internal memory. This mm. is me. Um, this is me taking a benchy model, downloading their slicer, and then trying to print well, that bench. When this is finished, so, stick the one on in the internal memory. See what they look like. Well, hold on. Let me just see if there are profiles on this USB stick. Just so this slice version probably have two or three walls, whereas the one on the USB is one wall. So it's quite flimsy. The models, slicing software for Windows. Yeah, that's just the slicer. There's no, I SPL haven't. SPL files on here, but there aren't... No, there's G code for a Benchy Hyper PLA yeah, 16 minutes 42. Yeah. So I've just done a Benchy. Have you had to remove the Bowden tube from the chain so it moves more freely? No, I, it does clonk about a little bit. Yeah, so but... mine's fine. Like it's, it's not dragging. No. Well, it doesn't seem to be anyway. It's astonishing how much of a difference it makes in noise, though. Mm. Like, quite a bit, quite a bit louder. It's the auxiliary fan. It's the it's the fan yeah. on the side panel that's um, that's that's making the most noise. So there is a sixteen minute benchy that's on that um, that's on that thing. Stop this one and do the 16 minute bench. <laughs> I want to yeah, see what it looks yeah. like. The thing is, is the reason why so I will do a 16 minute benchy, right? I will, I will print that. The reason why I want to do this one is because whatever settings were used to do that benchy are not available in this slicer. There's not a profile in this slicer that gives you a 16 minute benchy. So it's great that you can do a 16-minute benchy, mm. but, but you can't that's the it. only thing you can do at 16 minutes because the profile that's used to do this isn't in the slicer. Yeah, yeah. So it seems pointless. Mm -hmm. If they're going to give you the ability to do hyper-fast models, that's great, but then there should be a profile that that's lets where you the do hyper-fast models. a little easier because it's easy. You've got fast really fast or super fast yeah and you just click it on the screen 
So on mm -hmm. here, there's only two profiles. The profile is high quality mm. or normal. That's it. So the print speed doesn't change. In fact, let me just have a look at this. So on normal, so for a start, the infill is at 15%. So that's going to add in a whole bunch of time to it for a start. There are two walls. It's obviously a 0.2 layer height, which is fine. Print speed and everything else. So I'd actually challenge that if we just dropped the... Um, I bet if we just dropped the um, infill mm -hmm. and the wall count, if we put the walls down to one and we did the infill down to, say, 7%, yeah, we'd probably that. knock that time in half anyway. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to know what speed they were printing the hyper at and why they haven't given you the hyper profile. Mm. Did you so did you get another profile on your USB stick then? Me? No. No. No, I think so, the benchy is exactly what you're saying is that they've done it at the very minimum of like infill and wall speed that's all it is and then a very minimum of tolerances to get it as yeah quickly. literally to get it as quickly as possible so that to but me I, is pointless because no one if, you, if no one else has got that profile what's the point if you, you can just print that one benchy yeah that if they you provided click, you until the usb double, stick breaks Double click on the settings and then you can change the speed. Does anyone on have there? the details for the 16, 17 minute for the bamboo profile? Um, no. I don't, but I can probably get them. Like, don't be wrong, we'll try and create a speed profile and we'll see how close we can get to a 16, 17 minute benchy. But mm. that's not the profiles they're giving you. So it's not really an accurate reflection of how you're going to print with this printer. Because the reality is, is that you're not going to be printing like that. Mm. So this has now got another you know, 14 minutes left. <laughs> you can see it's almost done with the bow. Well, I had my, uh, I had my niece and nephew come and stay here last night. There is now several empty holes in my shelves. <laughs> she was, sorry? There's now empty holes in my shelves. Oh, right. I'm taking a bunch of stuff, have they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is good, because that means you've got space for more stuff. Luckily, it was all old stuff as well. Oh, well. I mean, as it is, there's no getting around it. We're going to have to... Um, we're going to have to build a shelf, probably on that door, specifically for the Ecto-1. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine well, my, where my, else it would go. My niece is five years old, right? She went, can I have that? I went, what? She wanted Dobby, right? She wanted what? Um, Dobby. Oh, Dobby. Dobby? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So for most people, when you see someone who's putting it out, Dobby, <coughs> it's Dobby. It's usually old in a sock. My one I did when he was stabbed in the belly with a knife. I had all blood on him. And the knife sticking out of him, and he was holding the knife. And she went, I want that. I went, Are you sure you want that? She was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah I want that. I went, Do you want me to take the knife off and put a sock there? She went, No, I want the knife. I was like, What? Well, that's that's a red flag. Yeah. Her mum was that's super angry today. Have to explain to a therapist at some point. Yeah, her mum was super angry today. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. I'm going to head off now. And yeah, no uh, worries, man. We're going to stay on for about another 20 minutes in. just to get this print done. Thanks for joining, man. Yeah, good luck. Cheers. See you later. See you later. So the, the next project that I, I, I need to finish my Kingpin um, and uh, and Daredevil model. So, I mean, the, the Daredevil model, honestly, it's turned into such a millstone around my neck. I want to give yeah, you some context the for one. the size. Right? So just one one second. All right, hold on. So this, this is Daredevil. So if we just compare that to the front of the K1. I'd say Daredevil is an eighth of the size of that model. 
So, like, so that's that's the size of Daredevil. You can see from the size of my completely regularly sized hand that um, that it's like it's 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 big. But we've got, but then we've got um, Kingpin to go on top of that, and Kingpin is at least three times the size of him. Kingpin I should is the not size have done of a, Kingpin is the size of a three year old child. Yeah. Like that yeah, daredevil yeah, is big. an eighth of the size of the entire model. The biggest issue I've had with Kingpin is so I like hollowed him it. in a vain hope to try and salt, like, save some weight and save some resin. Um, but what that's meant is I did 1.8 mil walls, and frankly, um, they aren't strong enough to support the joints. So um, this is the he's, he's, weight on he's it. leaning back like that. So the, the actual bulk of his weight is in the top, but that's over that sort of his, his knees are his here knees and then he's, he's back weight. here. So it's pulling on them. And, uh, and yeah, it's going to be a real, it's going to be a real nightmare to put together. Yeah. And the Iron Man is six foot five, which is fine because he's standing upright. Right, he's he's standing with Kingpin. He's 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 leant back, so because he's, he's a forty-five back, degree angle. Yeah, there's nothing supporting the back part, and all the weight is pulling on the knee joints and everything that and are on it. And then Daredevil fixes to his face. Yeah, it's just it's a pain. Oh, cool mods. Any word on the Apex Maker? Yes, it's currently sitting in my porch. We will uh, we'll be doing, doing a Wednesday. video on it during the week. Wednesday, I don't think, isn't it? Uh, Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Or maybe Wednesday. I don't really remember. We're doing no. stuff Wednesday, aren't we? Yeah, maybe Wednesday. All right. Well, anyway, it's here. So, yes, we have it. It's not out the box yet. So, we'll get it out the crate. And then, uh, and then we will probably, probably this Wednesday, actually, we'll do a live stream. Would love to see it compare that and the cool Seeger. So, <sighs> so we have got the cool Seeger as well. Um, we are trying to do some testing on that. Um, their profiles are a little bit, um, they've Shaky. got a really good hyper profile, um, but they're sort of their regular profiles without their resins, they're just not quite there yet. So, um, so we're doing a little bit of work with them to try and uh, to try and get those those profiles better. So that we can show that it can print, you know, at speed or whatever, um, while it's uh, while it's, you know, without having to, without having to mess about too much. So you, with, we've uh, been printing at speed profiles. with it. That profile just needs a little bit more tuning, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. So anyway, so so yes, we do have the cool Seeger, and I'll be honest, I think that pound for pound, they're probably printing at roughly the same speed. If you go for really, re if you're just looking at top, top speed, as in printing at 0.1 layer heights, the Cool Seeger may just have it. Just. Um, but then we haven't tried the Apex Maker yet. So it's difficult to say. It's a big machine, though. I'll say that much. The Cool Seeger is, is, is large. It is, yeah. It, goes and it, has got, it has got the most amazing button on it that on any yeah, printer I've got ever a really seen. Cool button on it, yeah. Power button. I would go so amazing. far as to say, I think the Cool Seeger is probably only about fifteen percent smaller than the Mega Eight K. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen to twenty percent smaller as a chassis. There's a lot I'd of. Say, I'd say as a chassis, it's maybe. 100 mil smaller whip wise yeah if that yeah so anyway so we're gonna we're gonna we're definitely gonna play about with it we're gonna get everything we're gonna sort of have a, we're gonna have a play about and get it get the settings right so that we can uh so we can go on a stream with it so we can see that we're on the roof we've got about another six minutes left on this see how this does and then we may do a resin Contests of champions. We were thinking, yeah, 
Because we've got, got to think, we've got, we've we've got, got the got, Mega, uh, Cool Seeger, the Apex, and the Magforms. Well, so the difficulty is, is there's that, a di stark difference in the price. Of yeah, one of there's a, a, the, the Apex, the, the, the Apex, the Cool Seeger really doesn't go up against the P13 and everything else. Really, the Cool Seeger goes up against the Whale and the GK2. It's a 10.1 inch screen, like it's not yeah. a large format MSLA printer. It's it's you know, I would put the Apex, the Mega, the M3 Max, and the P13. I'd stack those up against each other and see which one see which one came out on top then. I think those I think those machines up against each other would would do really well, especially because they all print with Chi2 box. Yeah. Yeah. So you really are not, you're not, comp you are comparing. You're not trying to convert different slices. Exactly. You are comparing apples and apples. It's not different slices. It's, it's slightly different settings, obviously, because the profiles. I feel why, because but... the last contest, the champions video we did took a long time to make and it took even longer to edit. <laughs> yeah. That was a pain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was bad. N3 would be last on my list, in my opinion. So the problem is, Matt, is that is that with the M3 Max, it it's about price. Like I've like so I did the, the Green Goblin model that I did. Um, I've done Thanos on it. Kingpin. Oh, no, Than oh, part of Thanos went on the Mega. Kingpin. But like, pardon. This Kingpin. And then model. Kingpin. Yeah, well, we haven't seen Kingpin yet, but yeah, but Kingpin as well. Like the M3 Max has done its, it's job. A, it's a workhorse for how much it is. Yeah, I don't use the auto the refill. I don't use the auto refill. It's um, it completely pointless. Um, it doesn't really work. It tops it up way too much. You can't adjust the level without bending the prongs, and that makes you feel really uncomfortable. Um, like it's it's just not it's just not that good. Um, but everything else about it, like. It's the, the M3 Max right now for the price. If you want, if you need a large format MSLA printer, see you later, Matt. If you need, uh, if you need a large format MSLA printer, and you can't afford to buy a, you know, a Mega at twenty five hundred pound or an Apex Maker at I think it's like twelve hundred something like that, or a P thirteen at five and a half grand. <laughs> you know, it, it 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 it's a very tantalizing option for that size. I mean, I still say to people that if they want to get into resin printing and they want a cheap reliable well, I say reliable, if they want a cheap entry level machine, the Anycubic Mono X is still one of the best deals out there. Like one of the best deals out there. The uniformation is better. The GK2 is my go-to resin printer at the moment. It's an absolute workhorse. It's I love the same it. as the, the Mega isn't my go-to printer. The Mighty is. Exactly. Um, you know, the, the, the GK2 is an absolutely amazing printer. I love it. I think it's brilliant. But I could I could just throw a handful of resin at the Mighty and what yeah. will come out will be some form of a model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my my uniformation is a real is a real workhorse. I do get better results out of the uniformation slicer than I do out of Chi2 box. Um, I don't think they did a good Chi2 box profile on it. Um, but it yeah, is, I, mean, I love the Mighty. It's a it's a, a amazing printer. Yeah, the Mighty's been the Mighty has been the machine I would say you've used the most out of all of yours since since I've got the Mighty. It has done some hours. Yeah, pretty much continuously. If I'm not printing something, that's the only reason it's not going. If I'm printing something, the mighty's on. Yeah. So I'll say like, this: we've got, that, video that, um, out, we've got a video coming out next week. I use the um the Sunlu red wax resin. Yeah, I'll show and them. I've got the little. Is, uh, I've got the little guy. Out of that on the mighty are stunning. So, let's just see if, oh, are you going to focus or? 
Well, as you can see, this is nice and blurry. So the Mighty is only 12K if you buy the 12K conversion kit. Is it going to focus? Put your hand behind it. There we there go. We. There we go. So that came off the Mighty. And what I've got to say about this resin is usually we tend to use grey, black, maybe a clear resin. Depends whatever's cheapest on sale at the time. But with this resin, and usually with that resin, you have to prime it to see what the detail's like on a model. With this resin, you don't have to. You can see it as soon as it comes off the printer. So I think you've got the other one there as well, wouldn't you? The bigger one. Uh, yes. So the other one. Let's zoom in on that. Hold on. So again, the detail that comes off on this resin is really really good you can see all the you can see all the flesh textures that's a focus mint model i think yeah really really good and then patrick stewart yeah which i love this model I actually want to do this much bigger. I love this. I think we're almost there. I know what you're saying, Mike, but your Mighty is a 12K. No, we haven't got the 12K oh. kit on ours. Our, our Mighty is an 8K. So this wasn't bad on timings. Like it got, it said originally it was going to be forty-two minutes, and it's um, and it's forty-three minutes and sort of fifteen seconds. So that's not that's not terrible at all. That's not terrible at all. So right, let's stop sharing the screen. Let's make me big, and then. We can have a little look and see how this does. So we've got the little snail trail. So, Benchy. So, obviously, white filament. I didn't pick the colour. This is the colour that it came. And the other Hyper Series they sent us as well is also white. So... I didn't pick the colour, but let's just see if we can't. Come on. There we go. Right. So this way, this way. Pretty good first layer. You can see there, we've got a weird sort of yellow ring around some of that. Yeah. So, I thought you did the conversion kit. No, we didn't. No, we wasn't sent it. So, still, as is still on 8K. Yeah. So, if I put my hand behind that, you can see that there is a little bit of wispiness. Again, bear in mind that this is not, this is their profile, their filament. We haven't done we haven't done anything to it. So there's no there's no sort of you know there's no um, tweaking or playing about with that or getting any of the settings right or any of that stuff. So um, there we go. So that is not bad. It's very smooth. Apparently, Creati are making the K1 K1 Max source code open this month. Because because I don't think you can adjust the Z offset at the moment if you need to. So I wouldn't say there's an elephant's foot on that. I wouldn't say there's too much squash on that. I'd say that's probably I'd say that's pretty bang on, to be honest. 
Although I appreciate that that doesn't mean that, you know, that that, that doesn't mean that um, other peoples are going to be like that as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how that bed level's gone down. To be fair, that's a bed level on a benchy. So, you know, it's not, it's not the whole bed level test, right? So I, I will do one of those as well. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice benchy. The overhangs are really clean. Um, the bow is really clean. The, the portholes are really nice and round. Everything is nice and square. No soft edges. Nice sharp corners. It's good. It's not 16 minutes. There is a, there is one on the USB stick, as we said. And look, as part of the review, we will try our best to do a profile that gets us as close to that 16-minute benchy as we can. Um, but will we be able to get to that setting? I don't know. I will try printing one of their 16-minute benches as a comparison. Um, it's annoying that this is white because it just really doesn't show – it doesn't show the filament. It doesn't show sort of that print quality fantastically. But – so, look, I think we're going to leave it there. That was the first print this machine has done. It's done a really good job. It went through and did all its calibration and set up. Um, 40 odd minutes though, it should be good. The Etna Mark III will do that in 40. Yeah, that's say that's with a 15 minute in that's the 15% infill with two walls with blah de blah de blah de blah. Now make sure you chain the printer down if you do it because it's really <laughs> so um so where this will be printing will be out in my workshop and I've got a solid bench that it'll go on. So that's it's not a problem. Um it's just because this is on wheels, so it moves yeah. out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how that came out. I think that went really well. Um, thanks very much for joining us, everybody. Um, we will keep you updated. We've got a lot more coming. We've got the apex maker, uh, coming this week. We've got, uh, the quiddy plus three, uh, and then probably the quiddy max three as well. Um, at some point that we've got to do, we've still got the two trees video to do for the laser. We've got a lot. We've got so more make busy couple videos of weeks. to do. We've got so many we've got to do, but we can Yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of videos. All do. we're doing is live streams. <laughs> so, <laughs> we... thank you very much for joining us, guys and dolls. We will catch you on the next live stream. Happy printing. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.